Hi, I'm James Naila Green, Professor of Brazilian History and Culture at Brown University and the National Co-Coordinator of the U.S. Network for Democracy in Brazil. And this is Brazil Unfiltered. Pelo meu histórico de atleta, caso fosse contaminado pelo vírus, não precisaria me preocupar. Nada sentiria ou seria, quando muito, acometido de uma gripezinha. Every week, Brazil Unfiltered brings you an analysis of the political, social, economic, and cultural situation in Brazil. This week, we will focus on the report of the Brazilian Congressional Investigative Committee looking into government policies and actions in addressing the COVID-19 crisis in Brazil. The 1,200-page report offers a damning indictment of the action and inaction of the administration of Jair Bolsonaro, the far-right former army captain and long-term congressional representative from Rio de Janeiro, who catapulted to the presidency in 2018 with his right-wing populist rhetoric laced with fake information that polarized language targeting the Workers' Party and the Brazilian left in general. Less than two years since the outbreak of COVID-19 worldwide, over 600,000 people have died in Brazil, a statistic only surpassed by the United States, currently with 725,000 deaths. There's no coincidence in comparing Brazil to the United States. In that, both countries were led by presidents who at first denied the seriousness of the virus, then offered unscientific cures. They refused to encourage people to wear masks and socially distance themselves, and then discourage people from using vaccines. Both Trump and Bolsonaro feared that the lockdowns, which were designed to stop the spread of the virus and cause a collapse in the healthcare systems of their respective countries, would in fact provoke an economic crisis. Both presidents therefore did everything possible to undercut the advice given by scientists to deal with the pandemic. Now, Biden was elected president in large part because of the disastrous way in which Trump responded to the COVID-19 crisis. And now Bolsonaro is facing an onslaught of criticism for his handling of the pandemic. Perhaps this is most dramatically captured in last week's cover of Istoé, a national weekly magazine along the lines of Newsweek, which printed a cover of Bolsonaro with a Hitler-esque haircut and a Hitler-esque mustache that form the letters of the word genocide. And in fact, an original draft of the report, which circulated last week, included the charge that Bolsonaro had carried out policies that resulted in the death of indigenous Brazilians in what amounted to genocide. Under pressure from other members of the Brazilian Congress, Henan Calheiros, the former president of the Senate, who was the rapporteur of the commission's final report, withdrew that charge against Bolsonaro, although he kept nine other charges against the president, among many other allegations, and more on, on the charge of genocide in a bit. Now, first, it's worth mentioning the charges against Bolsonaro. The essence was that Bolsonaro turned down every opportunity to get the vaccine, resulting in a delay in the campaign and almost 100,000 deaths. In part, this was due to the fact that Bolsonaro believed in herd immunity and therefore did not try to stop the spread of the disease or attempt to get vaccinations to the population. So the, the charges against him included the following. Negligence resulting in death caused by an epidemic, violations in preventative public health measures, charlatanism, here referring to promoting fake medical cures, such as the use of hydrochloroquine, encouraging criminal behavior, falsifying documents, misusing public funds, prevarication that is not acting when there was an imminent danger, and charges against humanity, which is included in the Rome Statutes, an international convention to which Brazil is a signer. And the, the charge of crimes against humanity entails general and systematic attacks on the civilian population, such as homicide, extermination, slavery, forced deportation, or moving of populations, torture, and rape. Now, these violations, the ones of crimes against humanity, would be tried by the International C Criminal Court in The Hague. The accusations of prevarication or failing to act would be tried by the Congress and would, re would require a supermajority for conviction. If found guilty of the crimes listed in the report, Bolsonaro would end up serving 38 years in prison, although this is highly unlikely, as I will explain in a minute. Bolsonaro's sons I've also uh, been charged with committing crimes that could lead to six months in prison. Among the charges against individuals in the report, other than the Bolsonaro family, are actions related to a Sao Paulo-based health insurance provider, Prevent Senor, 
who issued hydrochloroquine and other untested and unproven treatments against COVID-19 to its clients and carried out experiments on patients without their consent. The company is also charged with having modified death certificates to hide behind the fact that people died of COVID-19. Among others targeted by the report are members of the military. Bolsonaro has appointed over 6,000 active and retired members of the military to key administrative posts, and several high-profile officers took on key roles in the Ministry of Health, including providing supplies and logistics to distribute oxygen tanks, purchase and distribute medicine, and distribute the vaccine throughout the country. One major target is General Eduardo Pazuello, the Minister of Health in 2020 and 2021, who is facing 31 years in prison should he be convicted of criminal malfeasance. So why is the military so caught up in scandals related to dealing with COVID-19? Well, among the military's responsibilities was the production of hydrochloroquine. It seems that these military officers thought that there would be a single COVID-19 wave, and both Trump and Bolsonaro believed in the curative powers of the anti-malaria drug against COVID-19. And therefore, uh, they ordered in both countries the government to produce an excessive amount of the drug. Producing uh, such quantities of hydrochloroquine and hyping it to the public seemed to be a perfect way to become national heroes. Instead, many of them oversaw tens of thousands of deaths, tarnishing the image of the military. Now, as mentioned earlier in this program, an image of Bolsonaro as Hitler was on the cover of a major magazine and seen in newsstands all over the country. Bolsonaro has sued the owners for defamation and demanded a full six-page spread reporting the positive things that his government has done to combat COVID-19. The article in the magazine explains that it charged Bolsonaro with crimes against humanity and made references to Nazi Germany because his actions seem similar to the ways in which Germans also experimented on unwilling patients with unproven medical treatments and without their consent. Now, when most people think of the Nuremberg trials that took place immediately after World War II, they think of the conviction and hanging of high-ranking Nazi officers for crimes against humanity. However, there were subsequent Nuremberg trials against the Nazis, including ones against doctors who experimented on unwilling prisoners of war. These trials were later portrayed in the movie Judgment at Nuremberg, 1961, starring, among others, Marlene Dietrich. And it was about judges and others who complied with the crimes of the Nazi regime. Although not captured by the mainstream media, a polemic regarding the analogy comparing Bolsonaro to Hitler has circulated among members of the Brazilian Jewish community and others about whether such comparisons uh, between the two are appropriate. Do they banalize the horrors associated with the Holocaust and the crimes committed by Hitler? Carlos Haes, the general coordinator of the Holocaust Museum in Curitiba, a city in southern Brazil, considers that the memory of the Holocaust should not simply be preserved, but also appropriated. In an interview with Maris Kahani of the Brazil Israel Institute, Haes stated, quote, talking about the Holocaust is not talking about the past. It is using the past to talk about the present or the future. In that regard, he argued that any type of research, any kind of experiment that is said to be scientific, that is conducted without the consent of the person being studied, goes against one of the principal legacies of the Holocaust, namely the Nuremberg Laws. And if it violates the Nuremberg Laws, then it violates the Holocaust Museum in Curitiba, he stated. So then what is the next step for the report? It must now go to the Brazilian Attorney General who may choose to pursue the charges or shelf the case. Many consider it unlikely that Bolsonaro or his sons will be indicted for any crime. As you will recall, the president's allies in the House of Representatives are sitting on more than 130 petitions for the opening of impeachment hearings, and they have gone nowhere so far. The big center, the Centrão, controls a supermajority in the Congress. So unless things change drastically, it seems unlikely that these charges against Bolsonaro, along with many others filed with the Speaker of the House, will be voted on by the Congress. Bolsonaro, for the time being, seems fairly safe from being a prisoner in jail. However, as I said, and I continue to say, making predictions about the future as it regards Brazil is a perilous pastime. One is rarely right. Still, I do think that the ongoing discussion about the report, the inaction of the attorney general, the revelations about massive government corruption in attempts to purchase vaccines and schemes that would give government officials significant kickbacks have already uh, eroded Bolsonaro's popularity. 
Still, is it enough to push him out of the second place in the first round of the presidential elections? Bolsonaro and his sons face other problems, including another congressional commission investigating fake news, which was the backbone of Bolsonaro's 2018 election strategy. And the president, like his idol, Donald Trump, simply doesn't shut up. Believe it or not, with all the accusations against him coming out in the report, in his weekly broadcast, he claimed that the immunization from COVID-19 due to vaccinations could result in the developing of AIDS in those vaccinated. I'm not sure if he simply made this up or barred it from some deep, dark conspiracy corner of the internet. Still, it shows, like Trump, how deranged he seems to be. Well, that's all for now. Thanks for listening. Tell your friends about the program, and I'll see you in a week for more of Brazil Unfiltered. You can follow me on Instagram at James Naylor Green. You can find me on YouTube. Please subscribe to the program. Have a great week. Até logo. Ciao.